All right, so we are looking at the kinetic theory. So the objectives for today's lesson would be to state the parts of the kinetic theory, describe it. three pieces of evidence at least um, to support the kinetic theory and correlate how the evidence supports the theory. How, does, um, how do these pieces of evidence support the kinetic theory? So what is kinetic theory really? With the theory which describes the behavior of particles. Now, in the past, when anyone comes up with something or proposes something, they would call it a theory. You know this already. And uh, every theory has its postulates, as we, um, we call it, or the parts of their theory or the things that they're saying. So the, the particle kinetic theory is no different. The particle theory, the first thing is this, all matter is made up of particles. The fact that you guys were not able to tell me, this suggests that you probably don't know it. So you probably need to write this down because this is a part of your syllabus. So the first part of the kinetic theory is that every single piece of matter you see is made up of particles, okay? If you see water, glass, air, milk, cheese, bun, car, anything, all of those things are made up of particles. So that's the first bit. The second bit is that the particles are in constant random motion, all right? So the particles of matter are always moving and they are in constant random motion. And by random, of course, you know, we mean that there is no set pattern to their movement. So these particles are in constant random motion, okay? Third part is that there are attractive and repulsive forces um, between the particles. So um, by attractive and repulsive forces, we mean that there are these forces, these things which hold these particles together that are attractive. Some things pull them together and some things push them apart. If you have ever played with a magnet at any point in time, you would know that when you put the magnets together at certain ends, the north and south, if you know about magnets, then the magnets, the magnets would be attracted to each other. But if you put north to north or south to south, then there's going to be what we call repulsion. You're going to feel the magnets pushing away um, from each other. So it's the same thing with the particles of matter. They are attracted to each other, so you can feel something pulling together, and then there is repulsion. So there are these forces which hold the particles together, whatever those particles are. We have not really looked at them as yet, but we're talking about them. Okay, so these are the three postulates or three parts, the three main parts that you need to know about the particulate kinetic theory of matter. All matter is made up of particles, particles are in constant random motion, and there are attractive and repulsive forces um, between those particles. Of course, in science, this might sound harsh, but nobody cares about your opinion, okay? Nobody cares about your opinion in science. What science deals with is facts. Science is all about facts. It's all about proving your theory. Um, there's one thing though about science that if you cannot disprove somebody's theory as being false, you have to accept it until you can disprove it, okay? So if somebody says something in science and you cannot disprove it, you have to accept it until you can disprove it, all right? However, if you have a theory, you must have evidence to support your theory. You must, there must be something tangible, something observable that we can see or hear or feel or detect in some way which says that this theory is true and it's not just something in your head, you know? Are you guys following me so far? What evidence is there to support that matter is made up of particles? These particles are in constant random motion. It tells us that matter is made up of particles is that, um, well, evidence is there, is diffusion. Diffusion is the first thing that tells us that matter is made up of particles. The second thing is what we call osmosis. The third thing is a thing called Brownian motion. All three of these things tell us that matter is made up of particles and the particles are in constant random motion. So you're gonna be asking yourself, how does this do that? For us to say how that happens, we need to look at each of them. Um, the definition that we expect you to be able to have for diffusion is that 
the movement of particles from a region of high concentration or from an area of high concentration. Remember, this is chemistry now, so superficial answers are not going to really work. You have to incorporate certain terminologies like the movement of particles from high concentration to a low concentration, okay? So this diffusion tells us that matter must move, the particles of matter must move. How did I smell that um, rotting garbage? It must have the particles moving from where it is to my nose. So therefore, this is evidence that matter has particles which actually move because the garbage didn't come to my face. The KFC did not come directly to my face, but I'm smelling it. So clearly, this is evidence of that. All right. So now the next thing um, is osmosis. Usually, it's, osmosis is the movement of particles. Let me bring that up. Yes, there you go. And I'm going to correct something which you mentioned, but your answer was pretty good. Movement of solvent. And as I said, this is chemistry. In, in integrated science or maybe in biology, you can say liquid, but you won't get away with that in chemistry. We're going to mark it wrong. Okay. So osmosis is the movement of solvent particles. Water is what they call the universal solvent, but water is not the only solvent. Okay, there are other solvents, but water is just the most popular solvent there is. All right, so it's usually, it's the movement of solvent particles. And in some books you will see usually water from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration through a selective link. Now you said semi-permeable membrane, but we're talking about selectively because the membrane has holes in it, which only allow certain size particles to pass through. Okay, only certain size particles are allowed to pass through. So it's, it's a selectively permeable membrane. It is apparent or it appears as if the membrane allows something to pass through. So it's selectively. We do not accept the term partially or semi-permeable because those terms mean that part of the membrane is permeable and part is impermeable, which means that nothing can pass through. Okay, so when you are defining osmosis, you must use the term selectively permeable or you're not going to get it right. All right, that one word will make you lose all the marks or most of the marks. Okay, so this one now is Brownian motion. Have you guys heard of Brownian, Brownian motion? And from the video, you would have seen that it was discovered by Robert Brown some years ago. Well, quite a while back. Um, and Brownian motion really, it was epitomized in the smoke particles. It was epitomized with the pollen grains. So what he saw was the pollen grains in the water constantly moving around. Um, and he was annoyed by that as mentioned in the video. But then they later named the process of him. So Brownian motion is based off Robert Brown and is the random movement of particles due to collision or bombardment by other particles. So when the pollen grains were added to the water, the water molecules were bouncing against them, causing them to move, okay? If you see smoke and you notice, if you see smoke through a ray of light, like somebody lights a fire and then the sun is shining through the smoke, you notice some little particles bouncing around or if you're at home and somebody's doing some cleaning and it's morning, usually in the morning, and the sun is shining through a window and you see those dust particles in the air bouncing around, then that is Brownian motion, okay? So all of those speaks to Brownian motion in terms of the random movement of particles. And this also is another piece of evidence which supports the particle theory that matter is made up of particles and the particles are in constant random motion. How would the pollens, why would the pollen grains not sit in the water and not move unless something was bouncing them around? They must have been colliding with something, which tells us that there are particles in the water colliding with the pollen grains and this is why they're moving. Same thing for the smoke. The smoke particles are colliding with air particles. Same thing with the carbon that they mentioned in the last part of the video. 
they're colliding with something because those particles are moving and those are the particles of matter that we're talking about. So Brownian motion, the random movement of particles due to bombardment or collision. You may see bombardment. This is why I use the terminology bombardment, but some books will have in bombardment um, with other particles. All right. 